Live, and you can take control of the airwaves. All you have to do, dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE is the number for you. That's 1-855-450-3733. We are doing yet another episode from yet another Porcupine Freedom Festival. We've had the pleasure of broadcasting live for the last several Porcupine Freedom Festivals. The Pork Fest is what, Mark? It is a gathering of folks that are interested in the ideas of liberty at a campground here in northern New Hampshire in the beautiful White Mountains, and it's a week long. And it's a blast, because when you're here, you're around other people of a like mindset, unless, of course, you love uh, you know, aggressive government, in which case you're not going to find things too, uh, I don't know, friendly. Uh, not that people would be mean to uh, a government agent if they knew who he or she was, and there probably are a few of them milling about around here. I think that the best way to handle those folks is to talk to them about freedom and uh, show them that uh, we are a peaceful bunch, a, a bunch of folks that are interested in seeing change happen, but without the uh, willingness to do what the government guys do, and that is pick up a gun and use it to force our neighbors into the change they don't want. Yeah, and a lot of people don't uh, see the government using guns on a regular basis, but really at the heart of whatever they do, that's the that's the threat. You know, if you don't pull over, they're going to put down, you know, they're, they're going to start shooting out your tires or put down spike strips or whatever. I mean, you know, they could just be pulling you over for a broken tail light or whatever. Sometimes they pull you over to wish you happy holidays. We've read stories like that. What would happen if you decided not to pull over? Yeah, exactly. So we've actually got somebody with us here to start the show out with uh, tonight who has, uh, I would say, quite a bit of experience in dealing with law enforcement. His name is Dave Ridley. He's the man behind RidleyReport.com, which, you know, how would you describe, uh, what's the 30-second pitch on the elevator speech, if you will, on the Ridley Report, Dave? Well, in theory, I can do it in, in three seconds. It's a poor man's TV station. Yeah, and what you do is uh, you pretty much primarily report from here in New Hampshire. Yeah. So you're focusing a lot on uh, goings-on both uh, politically and apolitically, uh, stuff that's happening across the liberty movement here. So I like to describe you as a window into the world of the acti- uh, of the activism happening here. It's a great – Ridley Report is a great way for people who are on the outside of all this to get a, a little bit of a feel – for what's going on. Because, I mean, whatever you record here at Porkfest this week, and I presume you're, you're taping uh, various different Ridley reports, uh, and whatever it is that we're doing here on Free Talk Live, it's only a small selection of the occurrences that are happening just at this, uh, this one campground. I mean, there's, there's more than you could possibly ever cover. There's more than we could possibly ever cover. But you do a, a pretty damn good job of getting out there and bringing the news that liberty-minded people care about to them. Well, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, it's all counter programming. The idea is even within the liberty movement, I'm going to try to make sure I'm not duplicating stuff that's being covered by other liberty media, unless maybe they're smaller than me. Uh, mm-hmm. and the original idea was to counter program what the mainstream media was covering, and so by aiming my camera at the liberty movement. But now it's even gone further than that. Whereas there other, plenty of other people are reporting on the well, there's not plenty, but there's a lot of other people reporting on the liberty movement, and so it's my job to make sure I'm not duplicating their effort if I can help it. So what do you do? You just keep your ear to the other Liberty Media out there? And- I, tend, yeah, I tend to try and report stuff that I'm just specially positioned to report because maybe I'm the only one that has the information or because I'm in the right location or because I've got the right collection of file video to make it work. How many reports do you do a week? Uh, seven, I guess. On wow. Average. Yeah. And this is something that you've turned into your full-time gig, right? I mean, sort you, of. You were originally uh, someone who worked for big television stations. I think you were working in Boston when I first met you at a you know major network three-letter station. And you were able to leave that position. I presume that's because you were able to at least... I don't know, cover costs or something like that. Unless you're living off savings, it's it seems at least like that uh, with the advertisers on Ridley Report that you have been able to transition away from the corporate working world. Well, it's a little complicated. Yeah, I have mostly transitioned, but the um, the channel itself, the ads don't generate a ton of revenue. What happens is uh, it, they gener- the, the stories themselves generate other business opportunities, I guess. Um, so I might only make seven or fifteen dollars on an ad that airs in a particular Ridley O, 
But uh, when I um, am just out in the community, I run into more and more people, the more and more videos I do, who say, hey, can you do some PR work for me? Or, hey, can you make a video for me about this other thing? And so it generates business. 855-450-FREE. That's the SACL CAI toll-free line. If you uh, find yourself with a question for one of our guests that we have on, you're certainly welcome to uh, to join us on the air. Dave, you've, uh, your interactions on this program have gone back probably since before we were here in New Hampshire. So, Oh, yeah. I used to call you on my way back from my corporate job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? So... So what is the most interesting thing you've seen at uh, Porkfest this year? Good question. Oh, I, if I had more time to think about it, I'd have a better answer. But um, I think this year what was different was that I, you know, I came earlier. I came like on Sunday, early yeah. Sunday morning. A lot of people did, apparently. And uh, I, I actually meant to come even earlier than that. And I wish I could have because I, I really treasured that early time. You know, yeah. uh, there, there, you know, I was unpacking and getting ready and repacking and reconfiguring at a point in time when there wasn't a lot of, uh, of other stuff going on that I was missing. And that was real important. Um, but, uh, yeah, in terms of other interesting things that I've seen. Any of the panels? Oh, the so? bears. Well, yeah, the bears. Uh, there was, uh, I, I got to film a bear fight, <laughs> basically. Really? Yeah, there was uh, uh, the Monday morning uh, there down at the dumpsters here. The, the bears were working the dumpsters. Oh, wow. And uh, so I just uh, ran back and got my tripod and uh, just sat there and I did my workout and when the bears came back i'd film the bears and then i'd they'd run off and i'd resume my workout and it took me an hour and a half to finish my workout so wow but yeah they, they were they were very interesting and of course the, the the office staff here at rogers is not thrilled that they were there but i was imagine so so you, you there was a bear fight well it wasn't precisely a fight they kept chasing each other away from the food basically which was the garbage so well, yeah. you know, one man's garbage. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Another bear's meal. Apparently. Well, apparently the rubber bullets are coming out pretty soon, from what I understand. Is that so. to, keep, to, to drive the bears off? Yeah, they don't want to hurt them badly if they can help it, mm-hmm. but they want to make sure they don't keep coming after the trash. I mean, trash basically kills bears. Really? Because if you if a bear keeps coming after trash, someone has to shoot it sooner or later. Oh, I see. So, yeah. Yeah, but they're you know they're they're foragers and they're yeah. gonna forage through the trash. <laughs> Give so, them the opportunity. But you, the video. What yeah, kind of bears were they? The video. Um, Polar bears. Big uh, bears. I guess they were black bears, but I don't really, I don't know my How bears. big were they? The size of a dog? They are bigger than me. <laughs> the size of a dog? No, no, no. They were, um, uh, I would it's say <laughs> they were uh, yeah, bears, about, each about big. twice the size of a person, I guess. If they stood? No, no, I don't mean they were twice as tall as a person. Yeah, yeah, but the, it was probably, they were each weighed probably two to three times as many pounds, yeah. Wow. Um, big animals. <laughs> so Ridley's here. He is uh, his video camera. And of course, anywhere Ridley goes is subject to being recorded. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> I just, there was a gal, oh, I was over at Free Aid asking an unrelated question when this, you know, quasi-emergency comes running in. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a woman with her daughter, and I was like, hey, can you know, my mind if I film this process of your daughter being treated? And she's like, no. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, no, you can't film? Or oh, no, I- I'm sorry, I'll leave. I see. Um, so that didn't seem, you know, appropriate. RidleyReport.com is where folks can go to see what you're up to and i imagine like most people the internet here is completely unusable so you're probably going to have to wait till the end of the week to well, there's a upload there's a paleo version of the Ridley report here but i, I don't know, tell you about it later if you want me to hold it's me carb free the paleo version all right you've teased me hang on dave <laughs> we'll bring you back here in a moment dave ridley is with us here from the 2012 porcupine freedom festival more in a moment 855-450-FREE all right, so uh, we continue here live from Porkfest 2012 with Dave Ridley from RidleyReport.com, longtime, uh, I guess, friend of the show, somebody you, we've uh, had featured on a number of instances. And full disclosure, I am a sponsor of the Ridley Report. So, uh, the, you know, I'm a fan of the Ridley, yes. Ridley Report. I think that it's a, it's as great value as far as uh, advertising goes. It is great. I know his rates, and it's ridiculous. Ridiculously um, low, you Ridiculously mean? low. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, a lot of people watch those videos. Yep. So, uh, so Dave, you mentioned a paleo version of the Ridley Report uh, because I'd asked you a question about, you know, whether or not all the videos you're recording from this week are going to have to wait until next week to actually get uploaded. Because normally, Ridley Report is about getting the report out. It's not about a bunch of flashy editing or, you know, post production. It's about recording the uh, production, usually just editing it kind of as you're going on the fly, not even really editing, but just kind of shooting for the final product and uh, and getting it out there fast. Uh, that way you can really hit the quality, or excuse me, the quantity. Uh, and, of course, the quality's there more so than the average person who would be cranking out video like you because you're professionally trained. Uh, so how, what is a Paleo Ridley Report? Oh, hang on a second. Oh, right sorry. It's like basically a print edition of the Ridley Report because I figured we wouldn't have much Internet out here. 
Uh, so I've just been uh, printing up little, uh, I'm not even really printing, I'm just like writing down with my hand, you know, the latest bulletins of what's going on around Porcupine Fest and putting them on the physical bulletin board right outside the office here. And so I've already posted like four or five bulletins just awesome. in the, these first two days. And um, That's a commitment to news, right? Like you're writing this stuff down so people can have news that you would normally be watching your, your videos. I mean, Yeah, and that. I even sold ads for them, so um, that's making money <laughs> that's, on that too. That's so, a commitment yeah, to, to right. business. Thank yeah. you for doing that too. Right. But uh, the other idea that I had as I was doing this, I thought, you know what? It would be really nice, and I had this idea a little late, but wouldn't it be nice if there was one place people could go to find out all the different things they can openly buy at Porkfest? Instead of having to walk the grounds, why not just come to the bulletin board and find all the information right there? So I'm collecting information about what people are selling on the bull- and putting that on the bulletin board, too. Cool. So, so yeah. So RidleyReport.com, anything else you think is worth sharing with uh, our listeners? Still kind of early in uh, the Porcupine Freedom Festival, so there's a lot to come. And I imagine you will be there with your camera rolling for as much as possible. Yeah, I am shooting quite a bit of tape still, and that will all air you know, over, the, over the next week or two. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. All right. I thanks, appreciate uh, having you on, as always. Out of time for this evening, from the Porcupine Freedom Festival 2012 edition. <laughs>